Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Penny Press, which is a very cool, fun, fast playing, very fast playing easily. And, you know, this is an hour long game, you know, even probably with a full player count. Quick, quick area majority game with a lovely, well integrated theme. I mean, you know, history really comes alive. The rules actually say it's part, it's an important step of when you draw these cards, you are required to read the headlines so that you can kind of get, you know, more easily transport yourself back in time to what was actually happening in the city in the period. And I just absolutely love that attention to detail. Of course, you don't really have to read the stories, but I strongly recommend you do. Although also, I strongly recommend for the most part that you don't read the actual beginnings of the articles because some of those stories are really depressing and they can really drag the game down. Because a lot of terrible stuff happened back then. But if you just stick to the to the, the headlines, you'll be okay. But I got to say, well, first of all, I should say, thanks very much to Artie and Silva, a couple of board game geeks who were vacationing in Malta and came by the other day for a visit. Because they actually allowed me to play this game with more than two players. And we all had a blast. It was so much fun. You know, it just popped. There's so much excitement, so much tension, and so much... Um, well, I mean... I was about to say unpredictability, but that's not true because you can very easily see where everybody is. And it's pretty easy to predict when somebody's in a position where they're going to go to press. And so you can predict what's going to happen. You can see, okay, you know, what's, got, what's likely to happen? If I go on ahead and try to grab a space on this, how likely am I to be able to be holding at that when the turn comes back around to me so I could go to press with that story? Well, how many other reporters are there? Oh, you know, there's only one other reporter. Is anybody going to take the time to pull off because they're in a pitch battle over there? Or they're about to go to press in their own place. So, you know, there is actually, it's, it's very, very, there's a lot of predictability. If you pay attention, there are a lot of variables, a lot of things to track, but it's all open information. There's no hidden information in this game at all and very little randomness other than just the occasional seed that changes the, the value of these and makes new stuff come out. There's a lot to computate, but it's all fairly quick and easy computation. So, it's funny, I mean, this could be a lot heavier game. It, it kind of feels like a heavy game, but it's not. It's still very light and easy playing. I mean, about the heaviest thing is actively trying to pay attention to write. Okay, oh, you've got four stars in crime and I've got three, so... Um you know, or more to the point, yeah, there's four stars in crime over there, and you know, Jen has three, so she's probably going to want to try and grab that story. So if I come over here, she probably won't bother me with her last reporter because she'd rather get that because crime's actually got a pretty good bonus. So there's, you know, it can drag down a little bit, but only if you're going to get super hyper analytical. And if you if you play it, it's just kind of a no. Let's just play and you know, go for grabs. I mean, you know, you know go for the big stories because they. They're worth a lot of points by filling up space. Um, but, crap, I don't have room for the big story. Okay, well, I'll go for the small story because that'll fit in this little tiny spot. You know, the, the Tetris element of the game of trying to do the perfect layout, it's, 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 it's a cool, fun twist. And as long as you're a little bit careful, you never have to worry because it's painful to actually get a story and then find you don't have room for it. So it's, 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 it's not like... I'm glad that the developers and the designers did not try to make this a very elaborate, like... Uh, Princes of Florence type thing with all kinds of you know Tetris pieces and you're trying to mix and match it. It's very simple. It's just simple rectangles and squares. So there's a little bit of consideration about page space, but not too terribly much. The game doesn't drag on that. The game really has you focusing more. That becomes one of the elements of your consideration, but it's more about where are your majorities versus everybody out. What's going to give the most points at the end of the game based on what's likely to be the most valuable beat at the end of the game, and it just works great. We had a wonderful, fantastic time. Um, and I'm like I said, I'm glad Artie and Silva came by to, so we could experience that, because prior to that, Jen and I had only played it as a two-player game. And I do have to say, unfortunately, I am personally not a fan of the two-player implementation of Penny Press. Now, don't get me wrong, it works. I did, you know, Jen and I played it, and we thought, oh, well, yeah, that was kind of, it was okay. There were, there were a few interesting, there were a few tense moments, a few interesting decisions. But the way the two-player game works for Penny Press is, basically, there's, there's only two players, so, you know, there's, there's only ten reporters, five of mine and five of yours, and uh, we each get to take two turns in a row. So it comes around to me, I take a turn, and then I immediately take another turn. And then you take a turn. And then you immediately take another turn. So you have this back-to-back -back thing, very much like what uh, can often happen in Five Tribes if you play that two-player. And I wasn't, I wasn't a fan of double back-to-back -back turns there, and I'm not a fan of them here either. They work. They do create interesting elements. And in fact, they make the recall all your guys a much more interesting tactical element. Because, you know, call, recall all your guys is something you will have cause to do occasionally when you realize, oh crap, I'm losing everywhere. You know what? If I just pulled out, I could really nail this one thing, and that's the thing I really need. 
But with more players, you have to spend your whole turn pulling out. And then it won't be until it comes all the way back around to you the next turn that you can now make some big massive deployment in some new story that came out or something like that. In the two-player game, the pullout is much more because I could pull all out, that's my turn, and then I immediately have another turn on top of that. So it does create, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to deny the fact that you know we did have fun playing Penny Press as a two-player game. It worked. But I don't think I could... I, I don't think I would want to own Penny Press as a two-player only game. If you know, if I, you know, again, Jen and I, every game we own, we own it as a two-player only game. And for me, Penny Press, the more people you have sitting around the table, the better this game is going to get. The more crazy highs and lows, the the higher the prices, or you know, the the higher the value of stories you're going to get. In a two-player game, the stories there's never very many stories out because there are fewer players drawing these cards, and so there's fewer stories getting pumped into the system. And the stories are never going to be very very high in value because there's never very many stories. So the whole thing, I mean, the game flattens out. And it's it's tense because there's fewer points to be had in the first place, and there's a lot more points to be had at the bonus. So grabbing those stars becomes much more important. And like I said, there are interesting tactical decisions, but it's just meh, okay as a two-player game. But as soon as you put a third player, and more, and more, and more, you know, a fourth or a fifth player, even more so, it just gets better and better and better. So if you're interested in Penny Press, and uh, for the majority of the time, you're going to have, you're going to be able to play this with with a large group of people. I think it's going to go over great. You know, blast, an absolute blast. Had a fantastic time. Another nice thing too. This is a very, very, you know, wonderful and evocative theme that I think has the potential to draw a lot of people in. You know, the, the history really comes alive. There's a lot of really fascinating stuff. You know, particularly for American players, because of course, you know, you'll recognize a lot of the history of these things. And I mean, you'll just kind of know. Well, yeah, I know Teddy Roosevelt said that at some point, but now I'm actually reading a story about Teddy Roosevelt. You know, saying, um, you know, walks off the carry big stick and all that kind of stuff. The way history comes alive, I think, just really draws you in. And the core gameplay of this game is so simple. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's a gateway. It's certainly a gateway plus. But um, you know, if, if you've got people who are really into the subject matter, I think you could introduce board games to people with this, and um, you'd probably clean the clocks with them because if you're a good player. But um, you know, I, I, there's probably a way you could handicap yourself. So I, I, I think this game really works well as you know a gateway or gateway plus. Um, you know, it's very very evocative and it's amazing too. No matter how many people you're going to put into this game, it's going to play just as fast. Because the more players, when you're playing with a four or five player game, the game get in gets triggered when there's three stories published instead of four. So the um, number of stories to publish gets shorter, the race becomes that much more intense. And it's just fantastic. And so if you own it already, because you play it with four or five or three players, Every once in a while, it might be kind of, a, and you, and maybe we'll play it as a two-player game, but you would not want to own this primarily as a two-player game because I think it's just kind of okay. I'm really kind of disappointed too because honestly, I think personally, I would have rather gone for a dummy player system where players have like you know, a, you know, they take the the non-player characters, and so it's my turn, and then I have my dummy reporters, and I could send them out. I could send them out to cry and, and grab space and make it more difficult for my opponent to grab the stories they want. I could send them out to drive up the value of the stories I'm really interested in. I mean, and you know, and so I, I would have my dummy players, and then Jen would have her dummy players. Those players never score. It's just about me and her, and we just have more control over the board. And, um, and then, interestingly, I think the two-player game would become more interesting as well when you introduce, which I haven't talked about at all, the Newsboy Strike variant. You can't really see it because I'm wearing a red shirt. The, the, it comes with this, which is a variant where you only can do it in a four- or five-player game. What happens is one player has this, and when it comes around to them, their turn gets skipped because their newsboys are on strike. But then, instead of, you know, so their turn gets skipped, and then it gets trans transferred to the next player. Clockwise, if I recall. So, um, you know, every other every other go around, you your turn gets skipped, and that, or I'm sorry, not every other go around, but you know, every what, every fourth go around, you skip a turn. But you can see it coming. You know that it's coming, and you can plan for it. You know that you know what I'm not going to get a turn next turn. Even maybe I should go to press now, even though it's not going to be as good as I want, because I want just one more turn to be able to grab this and go to press. But next turn I'm not going to. I better go to press now. This puts a lot of really interesting pressure. I think it's very cool. 
And if as a two-player game, the two-player game replicated a four-player game with you know these dummy players that the two players control, then this could come in, and I think you'd have you'd really be talking about something very very cool and a two-player variant that might work, that might capture all the same excitement because then you'd have stories you know getting really really valuable. You'd uh, you know you, you'd have a lot more interesting give and take on the board, but. You know, the designers went a different way. I wasn't particularly a fan of it. So that's why, unfortunately, since Jen and I are two-player only gamers, it's not really for us. But I think this game would, I mean, I think this game can work in a lot of situations. It's a lot of fun. It's very easy to pick up and play very fast, very thematic, and just absolutely lovely. Excellent, excellent freshman effort from Matt and Robert, the co-designers of Penny Press. Good job, guys. Oh, also, did I mention, by the way, the game won the Tabletop Deathmatch Award. Which is, you know, is, is not an insignificant task as well. So, I mean, I'm not alone. There are a lot of people who actually thought this was worthwhile because, you know, it won, the, you know, this big award. It, you know, that was competing against like 30 games. There's like this whole series on YouTube. It's a great, great series. I really enjoyed it a lot. The Tabletop Deathmatch series. And I'm going to stop right there, folks. That is Penny Press. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. And if I made any mistakes, please point them out. I'm sure I made a few. Got a little carried away there. And as always, before you... Uh, May point out the goofs, see if Paolo already caught him, because chances are he probably did. But otherwise, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. So long. Stop the presses. Bye-bye.